so I'll be speaking on traumatic optic neuropathy. As the name suggests, it indicates trauma to the optic nerve, secondary to an insult to the optic nerve. It can be classified based upon the site of injury, uh, being op uh, that is op intraocular, intraorbital, uh, intracanalicular, and intracranial. Intracanalicular being the most common because here <coughs> the optic uh, nerve dura mater is attached to the periosteum of the optic canal, uh, being the most common site of uh, injury, followed by an intracranial site. <coughs> uh, the <coughs> Uh, the the mode, depending upon the mode of injury, traumatic optic neuropathy can be classified as direct and indirect injury. Uh, direct in, uh, uh, traumatic optic neuropathy results from an an anatomical disruption of the optic nerve, whereas an indirect traumatic optic neuropathy, which is most common, is caused by transmission of forces uh, of, from uh, to the optic nerve from a distant site. The direct traumatic optic neuropathy injury can cause an optic nerve evolution or an optic nerve transection. Uh, based upon the pathophysiology, it can be classified as primary and secondary injury, where primary inji injury indicates an ischemia to the optic nerve caused by damage from mechanical shearing of the optic nerve axons and contusion necrosis. And secondary inji injury occurs subsequent to the trauma, wherein the ischemia basically causes an optic nerve swelling, which further reduces the blood flow to the eye nerve and causes an eventual cell death. Uh, it is uh, the incidence of traumatic optic neuropathy in head injury patient is 0 0.7 to 2.5 percentage, usually seen in young men in their early 30s post road traffic accidents. Moving on to our case, uh, this uh, this is an 18 year old boy who presented with history of fall from uh, bike one day prior, presented to us with blurring of vision since then, with the visual acuity of county finger close to face in the left eye, with RAPD in the left eye. The fundus evaluation was normal, along with the normal neuroimaging. After explaining the treatment modalities, uh, the patient was treated with one uh, gram of uh, IV methylprednisolone for three days, followed by a tapering dose of one milligram uh, oral uh, systemic steroids in a tapering dose. And at six weeks follow-up, his vision had improved to 6 by 60 with the setting in of optic disc pallor. Uh, the clinical features in traumatic optic neuropathy, it is basically a uh, disease of clinical diagnosis depending upon the history. It can be unilateral or bilateral. Uh, patients usually present with RAPD unless it is a bilaterally symmetric case. Patients have a variable loss of visual acuity, ranging from no perception of light to normal vision. There is an impaired defective color vision, variable visual field defects, and the optic disc appearance depends, depends on the anatomical site and the timing of injury. Uh, the challenge usually faced in treating optic neuropathy is that though it's an important cause of severe vision, vision loss, there is, uh, uh, the clinicians, however, remain divided over the best management strategy since there is no evidence-based guidelines regarding the uh, evaluation and management and there is no uh, randomized control trial for the same. The treatment options that are available are uh, treat, uh, treatment with systemic steroids, with optic nerve uh, decompression, the optic canal decompression, a combination of both or conservative management. There are certain studies that has helped us uh, with the, in deciding the management of traumatic optic neuropathy. I'll be discussing a few. The National Acute Spinal Cord Injury Study, wherein uh, patients who presented within eight hours of spinal cord injury were treated with megadose uh, steroids. Uh, a significant enhancement in the neurological recovery was noted. And these results were extrapolated into the treatment of traumatic optic neuropathy. Another multi-center study was an, uh, the International Optic Nerve Trauma Study, which uh, wherein uh, patients were divided into two, three groups. Group one comprised of patients who were managed conservatively, group two with systemic steroids, and group three were treated with surgery. Uh, it was noted that none, uh, uh, there was no visual, uh, basically the visual outcome in all the three groups, uh, uh, there was no statistically significant difference between the three groups and the authors concluded that neither corticosteroids nor from, uh, optic canal surgery should be considered the standard of care for patients with traumatic optic neuropathy. Uh, there are uh, several animal studies also that have uh, 
uh, from which experimental models have been created, developed. And it was noted that uh, those dependent decline in axonal counts with increasing dose of steroids, uh, which was uh, done, uh, which was done by a study, uh, I mean, which was concluded by a study uh, done by Stainsper et al. And uh, it was concluded that a maximum dose of one gram of methylprednisolone is advocated in traumatic optic neuropathy to minimize the risk of neurotoxicity. Uh, moving on to our second case, this is a 26-year-old gentleman who presented to us with a history of road, traf uh, road traffic accident and presented with no perception of light in the right eye. Uh, uh, he had an APD and the fundus evaluation revealed a pale disc. Neuroimaging uh, indicated uh, fracture and stenosis of the optic canal. Before moving on to the uh, management in this case, let us discuss some of the prognostic factors in traumatic optic neuropathy. Patients presenting with no uh, light perception, a loss of consciousness at the time of presentation, lack of visual recovery at 48 hours, absence of visual evoked response, and the presence of an optic canal fracture and direct injury have poor uh, prognosis in terms of visual outcome. And uh, uh, also a Cochrane review on surgical uh, intervention uh, in patients with traumatic optic uh, neuropathy concluded that there is no evidence that supports that any form of surgical decompression improves the visual outcome of uh, in traumatic optic neuropathy. Hence, in our case, since there were multiple poor prognostic factors, that is, no perception of light at presentation, patient had an optic canal fracture, and also uh, there was a delay in presentation, we decided not to intervene. Uh, moving on to the third case, this is an 18-year-old boy who presented with blurring of vi uh, vision in the left eye post-road traffic accident uh, two weeks back. He presented with a vision of 6 by 60, a defective color vision, RAPD in the left eye and uh, temporal, an early temporal pallor with the nasal field defect on visual field analysis. Uh, the neuroimaging was normal. In, uh, in this patient, uh, again we discussed the pros and cons of management and uh, treated him conservatively and at six weeks follow up his vision improved to 6 by 24. Uh, this uh, basically uh, this patient was managed conservatively which was again supported by international optic nerve trauma study which indicates that a visual recovery rate of 40 to 60 percent has been reported in indirect traumatic optic neuropathy cases managed conservatively which is comparable with those achieved in patients treated with steroids surgery or a combination of both. To summarize, since there is no general consensus in treatment of traumatic optic neuropathy, uh, we always need to look for any other treatable cause of vision loss in these patients, look for any intraocular foreign body. And uh, again, a study by Stainspar et al. stated that a methylprednisolone dosage of 250 milligram intravenously every 6 hours for 24 to 48 hours is advocated. And uh, if, if uh, it may be reasonable to with, uh, withhold steroids if more than eight hours have elapsed since the time of injury. And optic nerve uh, uh, decompression should be considered in patients with the bony fragment impinging on the optic nerve and should be avoided in unconscious patients. There are uh, future, however, lies in uh, neuroprotection and regeneration modalities that have been studied on several animal models. Uh, I'd like to conclude by stating that there is a relatively high rate of spontaneous visual recovery in traumatic optic neuropathy. There is no convincing evidence that steroids or surgery provide any, any additional benefit over conservative management and each case needs to be assessed on an individual basis and an explained informed decision needs to be taken. Uh, these are my references. Thank you.